Can you image another galaxy with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Now that is a very bold question. You are pushing the smartphone to its absolute limits, but I'm asking the question though, because I do truly believe that even a smartphone can capture our cosmos in tremendous detail. In tonight's episode, I'm gonna be trying to image Jupiter's moons, the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy with my smartphone. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. I decided to test out the brand new Samsung 24 Ultra in the clearest skies imaginable and for that I had to travel to the edge of a volcano and stay in this beautiful room which had two separate balconies allowing me to capture the cosmos all through the night. With views like this it's impossible to take a bad photo. Which leads me to chapter 1 in which we learn how to take a bad photo of our night sky with your smartphone and a simple solution to prevent this. Alright, so I'm just going to point it up here towards the constellation of Orion and impressively I can actually see it on the smartphone. I'm going to press capture and it says wait 4 seconds, hold your camera still and I'm going to bring it back down to the camera here so we can look at it. Now there's no work that's been done to this image on the phone as it stands. Already I can see about two to three hundred stars in this image but this is where things start to get tricky so i want to get a closer look at the orion nebula so i'm going to change my camera lens from being one times to a bit further zoomed in let's try three okay so that perfectly captures the entire constellation itself and here is our first and biggest issue the stars are all blurry now that's due to a number of reasons the biggest one right now is actually because shake your hands holding your phone out like that it's not easy it says hold your phone steady it's like yeah i'm trying but if we go beyond this if i do plant this on a tripod and point it towards our night sky which I will do shortly, we're going to have a similar issue. The stars in our night sky actually appear to move over the course of the night. That's not actually the case. What's really happening is they're all staying still, but our planet is rotating. Perspective is key in this instance. But in order to counteract that, we're going to need to place this smartphone on top of a tracking mount that will follow the movement of the stars and allow us to take much longer exposures. And the final and most important thing that we can do in order to bring out the beauty of our cosmos with just a smartphone is we can take multiple photos. Because by taking multiple photos, we can stack them together, create a resultant image that's hopefully a lot cleaner where the signal to noise ratio is a lot higher. Let's get to it and let's start trying to capture our universe with a Samsung S24 Galaxy Ultra. Okay, so I've got quite a setup outside right now with one, two, three different telescopes. So yeah, let's go see how they're getting on outside because I'm about to attach my smartphone outside where it is, of course, very dark. So if you look outwards, you can see a lot of stars. going to move past my telescopes that are set up on the ledge just there. So it is very cold which is why I'm wrapped up very warm but I'm still quite chilly so I'm going to get my hand warmers out in a minute. But yeah I'm controlling all of my telescopes right now from my smartphone but I'm actually about to do something that will give up my usage of those telescopes because I'm now going to mount my smartphone on top of this telescope. So if you look just here so there is a phone holder mount. So this is the way that I'm actually going to maximize the capabilities of the S24 Ultra is I'm going to use a tracking mount so it can take a longer exposure image of the night sky. It's going to be taking a 30 second exposure at its max ISO which is 3200. I suppose in a sense not everyone's going to have a tracking mount to go with their smartphone device but the videos have actually showcased what it is capable of if you have the right equipment. So yeah let's get the phone mounted on top of the telescope and see how it does. By using the 5 times zoom, we are just about getting the whole of the constellation of Orion in our shot, which is really cool as it means we are likely to capture multiple deep sky objects. This is what we can see when taking sequential 30 second long exposures. Incredibly, we can very clearly and distinctly make out the Orion Nebula in all of these shots. These are of course the raw shots. Our secret to revealing more detail lies in us stacking multiple images together in order to increase the signal to noise ratio. And when we do, this is our result. Absolutely amazing. 
a Stella nursery captured with this teeny tiny sensor and camera of a smartphone. And what makes it all the more sensational is that surrounding the most upper star of Orion's belt, we can faintly make out the flame nebula and traces of the horsehead nebula. The clear skies are one of the biggest factors enabling us to take these images, but also the variety of lenses featured on the smartphone mean we have an option to zoom in on these wonders and reveal more of their detail. So yeah, there we have it. That is an image of the Orion Nebula captured on the S24 Ultra, but it's a top of the line smartphone capture and we are in the clearest skies on the planet. With that being said though, I found that pushing the camera up into 10 times zoom didn't provide any significant increase in the level of detail available. You can judge for yourself which setting you most prefer from this comparison of the resultant images achieved at 10 times zoom and 5 times zoom. I did also try out the 10 times zoom on Jupiter, and in doing so, I was able to image several of its largest moons. But despite how much I reduced the exposure, it was impossible to make out any of the surface detail on Jupiter. Which brings me to the big one the galaxy next door. A galaxy captured with a galaxy from another galaxy. What an absurd thing to say. But even with the unique capabilities of this smartphone, it is by no means unique in being able to capture the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda is actually one of the easiest deep sky objects to image, and I suspect many a smartphone will be able to capture it. So don't think your own smartphone won't also be able to image this galaxy, because I'd say with a high level of confidence, it can. Even from these raw images, we can see so much detail and even identify the galactic disk. Well, let's see what else it can capture when I stack 28 30 second long exposures together. I've been interested in astrophotography now for just over 10 years, and I must say that this is the closest feeling I've had to the initial excitement of stargazing for the first time when I was 15 years old. Don't get me wrong, it's still amazing now, especially with the use of 10-inch telescopes, but the ability to take this photo without the use of a telescope or a DSLR camera or a big beefy lens is just staggering. I must admit, I am very proud of this image. But with that being said, it's also filled with regret. You see, I had a lot of videos to film on this trip and I didn't get enough time to dedicate myself towards capturing a couple hours worth of Andromeda Galaxy images with the S24 Ultra. Which brings me on to my final point. You can do better. Bortle One skies are great. They greatly reduce the amount of exposure time required to image objects. But the most important factor in astrophotography is your total integration time. I feel quite confident in saying that I believe I could beat these images taken in Bortle 1 skies from my garden, which is Bortle 6, provided I was able to image for a couple of hours. So, my challenge to you watching this is to try and beat me. Try and exceed the quality and majesty of these images yourself, not through the expense of your equipment, but by the amount of time you're willing to dedicate to capturing our cosmos. These are good, but they can most certainly be better. If you don't have a tracking mount, that's okay. Get a tripod and take hundreds, maybe even thousands of short length exposures. With enough patience, you can outdo these images and capture even more wonderful objects than I have. Here's a prime example of what a real challenging target is. M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, located very close to M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. I've managed to just about make it out, but with more time, I bet you could bring out some detail in its arms. After I got home from this trip, I actually returned my S24 Ultra. Although it's an amazing phone, I didn't feel the outrageous price tag warranted the cost of upgrading from my S20 Ultra. Yeah, I think I'm quietly impressed with the results. It is possible to capture our cosmos on a smartphone. Now, isn't that the craziest thing imaginable? We keep it in our pocket with us for the majority of every single day of our living lives. And if we want to, we can pull it out and capture things that are literally out of this world. So for me, this is very impressive. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.